Hello students, this video brings to you tips and tricks to crack KCT. Compared to JE mains or NEET, KCT is relatively easier. But the thing is, you really need to be very quick since each question needs to be solved in just 60 seconds. This needs a real practice. But nothing to worry, there are certain tips and tricks which you can follow so that you can solve certain problems just in 30 seconds. So here we go. The first example is here. In the following diagram, the value of V0 is approximately. Let's see how we can solve this. The classical method is just like this. You can observe here that there is 10 volt here. This is V0 which we are supposed to find out. This is 5 volt and this is 6 volt. You can see that the current is flowing in this direction I1 and it splits into 2 as I2 and I3 here. You remember one thing that current always flows from higher potential to lower potential. Fine. So how do we solve this? We know from KCL that current entering a node should be equal to current leaving the node. So current entering the node here is I1 and current leaving the node is I2 and I3. So I can clearly write I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. Now, from Ohm's law, we know I is equal to V by R, potential difference divided by the resistance. So the potential difference across this is nothing but 10 minus V0 divided by the resistance in that branch is 5 Ohm. This is equal to I2. I2 is the current in this branch. So the potential difference across that is V0 minus 5 divided by the resistance in that branch is 10 Ohm plus I3. What is I3? The potential difference across the third branch that is V0 minus 6 divided by the resistance in that branch is 15 volt. So you can see an equation which can be a little bit simplified that is this way. You can cancel it and you can write it a little better. Okay, but then again, you need to solve this for V0, which involves a lot of steps and obviously it will take more than 60 seconds. So what can be done? Is there anything else? Yes. So we can check the options and try to eliminate certain options, which is not applicable. So let's start with 4 volt. As I told you, current should always flow from higher potential to lower potential. So 4 volt, if suppose the value of V0 was 4 volt, then Let's see whether current I1 could flow. Yes, current I1 could flow because it's going from higher potential 10 volt to 4 volt. Yes, fine. Could current I2 flow then? I2 is going from 4 volt to 5 volt, which is not possible because it's going from lower potential to higher potential. So that just gets discarded. Let's go for the second option 8 volt. Suppose by chance this was 8 volt, V0 was 8 volt, then the current obviously I1 would fall, flow from 10 volt to 8 volt but okay then current i2 also could flow from 8 volt to 5 volt and it could i3 also could flow from 8 volt to 6 volt seems to be possible fine third option 10 volt by chance v0 was 10 volt obviously i could i1 couldn't flow because potential difference is zero here 10 volt to 10 volt so that's not possible so 10 volt is not possible then comes 6 volt so by chance v0 was 6 volt then is it possible for current I1 to flow? Yes, it's possible. But I3 wouldn't be possible because 6 volt, 6 volt will not have a potential difference. So this is not possible. Okay, so easily we could eliminate three options and we are left with the final answer that's 8 volt. But by chance, if you ask me, if there was an option which was 9 volt. So if there was an option with 9 volt, current from 10 to 9 volt, yes, could flow. 9 volt to 5 volt could flow. 9 volt to 6 volt, yes, possible. So that is possible. Then what to do? So we learned elimination method. There is something else called half solving method. What we can do in that is we have now left with two choice. So what we can do is already I have given, I have an equation with me which was a little difficult to solve. So what we will do is we will just now, since we have two options, we will just substitute the options and check out. So one option if you substitute, that's enough because if that doesn't turn out to be the answer, the other one has to be the answer. So let's try putting, substituting V0 as 8 here, 8 here and 8 here and just check whether left hand side is equal to right hand side. So if that turns out to be right, that's the answer. If it doesn't turn out to be right, then 9 volts should be the answer. So that's how reverse solving, uh, sorry, elimination and uh, 
uh, half solving works. Let's see something else. Let's go on, move on to the second one. So there is speed V, acceleration A, force F. You have to consider them as fundamental. You have to find the dimension formula of Young's modulus. They have given you the formula for Young's modulus here, stress by strain. Otherwise, you know the formula, stress by strain, strain doesn't have a dimension formula. So it's just stress, which is forced by area, whose dimension formula is M, L, T, minus 2 divided by L square, which turns out to be M, L minus 1, T minus 2. So this is the dimension formula for Young's modulus. Let's see now how to solve this. Your classical method goes like this. Young's modulus depends on velocity, acceleration and force. But how it depends, we do not know. Powers x, y, z, we do not know. So you have learned this method. Sub, uh, apply the dimensional formula everywhere for all the terms y, v, a, f and then compare the dimensions and that will give you x, y, z value and that's how you can identify your answer. But is there something else that can be done? Yes, there's something called reverse solving. So we learned elimination method, we learned uh, half solving method, now we are learning reverse solving method. We pick the options and try in a reverse way to get this answer. So our answer should be should turn out to be m l minus 1 t minus 2. So let's see reverse solving whether it works. Usually in reverse solving you get the options first or second will be the right option but let's see what happens here. So we have velocity acceleration force. Velocity dimension formula is l t minus 1 and this has a power minus 2 and acceleration has a dimension formula l t minus 2 and this one's power is 2 given there in the first option and force m l t minus 2 and this one's for power is minus 2. Now you may ask me should I sit and solve all this not required. So what you want the final outcome is m l minus 1 t minus 2 just check m here m has a power 1 here m is only one term here and its power is minus 2 so automatically this gets discarded. Let's check the second one if you see the second one first term and second term is the same so you do not waste your time writing that last term f has a power 2 so this becomes plus 2 again m has a power 2 but we need m's power to be 1 so second option also gets discarded so easily let's see the last uh, third one so l t minus 1 whole power minus 4 acceleration l t minus 2 whole power 2 and force m l t minus 2 so just check on this l to the power minus 4 t to the power plus 4 l to the power 2 t to the power minus 4 m l t minus 2 so just check out this this turns out to be the right answer so once you you are done with this you don't have to check the fourth option at all so that's how uh, reverse solving will help okay move on to the next one here we have equivalent resistance of two resistors connected in series to be 6 ohm when they are in series, two resistors R1, R2 will have a formula R1 plus R2 is equal to 6 ohm. And their parallel combination has an effective value R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And this is given to be 4 by 3. It's given to be 4 by 3. So what you can see here is R1 plus R2, we already know that's 6. So if you just shift that here into 6, you will get this as 8. So you got a product now, R1, R2 is equal to 8. So how do you solve this? Next, what you can do is you can take R1 is 8 by R2 and substitute that R1 here as 8 by R2 plus R2 is equal to 6 and you rearrange that equation you get a quadratic equation and that again becomes a lengthy method. So let's check the options and try to eliminate the options here. If you look at the equation R1 plus R2 is 6. So just pick the options. R, these are R1 and R2 options. So see the first option R1 and R2, 4 and 2. When you add 4 and 2, do you get 6? Yes, we get, get 6. So this could be one choice. When you multiply them, you should get answer as 8. So yes we do get so that should be the answer that's done so you, you can just try with the other options no options give you the sum as six if there was a 
option 3 and 3 yes the sum is 6 but the product is not 8 so obviously this won't be the answer so this is how you eliminate options okay finally if nothing works then there is one more thing usually in uh, KCT if you see the options options will be given in uh, this manner if you observe this uh, option you have 2 2 2 then power 11 11 11 all those repeated so you can make use of this technique here you are supposed to find the time period of light don't read anything else just see time period uh, required time required for light obviously light travels very fast so obviously it will not require 2 into 10th power 11 seconds so this is discarded now among these three which is the right choice if you look at this repeated 11 is repeated three times so obviously your option should be something to do with 11 so this is gone so you have just eliminated the fourth option now again in first and second option again you check two is repeated three times so your uh, first option does not have that two so you can go with the answer that's option b 2 into 10 to the power minus 11 okay finally if nothing works nothing works then uh, remember one thing in ct there are four options a b c and d the probability of having the answers are equal for a b c and d options for example if there are 60 questions uh, it's not exact but just roughly almost 12 questions or 10 to 12 10 to 14 questions may be of option a same way 10 to 14 questions may be of option b so that way so last uh, when you're done with almost all the problems what you can do is you can just when you're really going for the guessing work you can try this you just check all your answers so suppose you have already answered a few questions and in that 10 turns out to be option a and maybe somewhere around 8 or 9 turns out to be option B. Then your probability of uh, getting the answer D and uh, C would be more. So you could go for more of C and D as a guessing work. So these are the certain tips and tricks what you have learned how to eliminate the options, how to go in a reverse way, reverse solving and how to uh, solve uh, ha half solving method. So please try these tips and tricks and all the best for your KCT. Thank you so much.